Class example 4.23. Given the graph of the function f of x is equal to 1 half times x plus 1 squared minus 2, state the domain of the function y is equal to the square root of f of x. So in this one, we're actually given the graph so that we won't have to do as much work as before. Because remember that y is equal to the square root of f of x is defined where f of x is greater than 0. And remember that we could also say where our y values are greater than 0. So important points here are going to be our x-intercepts. Because the only place that our y values are greater than 0 are going to be you know, up here, right? Everything's greater than 0 up there on both sides. And it's not allowed down here. That Those are negative values for our y or for our f of x. So that's not allowed. So it's, it's going to be below negative 3 and above 1. Determine the coordinates of the invariant points in the transformation to y is equal to the square root of f of x. So provide both or provide coordinates both as exact values and as decimal approximations to the nearest hundredth. So remember our invariant points occur when f of x is equal to zero or one. So the good news is we've already found two of those and they were integer values so we could see those right from the graph. So we, we have two of them already. But now the other two, when, when f of x is equal to one, isn't as obvious to see from the graph. So what we're going to have to do is solve those ones algebraically. So we'll set up our equation. So this is f of x. That's our equation. And we're going to set it equal to 1 and then do some algebra. So if I want to get x on its own, then the first one to go is the, the negative 2. We have to get this to the other side. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. Next, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the half. And then at this point, our x is still trapped inside the brackets here. We have to remove the squared. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So remember when you take the square root that you get a positive and negative version of that square root. That's where our two separate solutions are going to come from, is from the positive and negative version there. So then next we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So here's our solution for x, our solutions. And uh, this would be the exact value. So as exact values, we're going to keep the square roots. So the invariant points would look as follows. Or as decimals, we would approximate these square root solutions. So. The problem with decimal values is that we would have to round at some point. It's going to be a less accurate solution than the uh, square root. Next, let's sketch the graph of y is equal to the square root of f of x on the same grid. So the good news is we already have two points. We have our invariant point, so we should be uh, partially set. but we are going to want to obtain the points on the graph of y is equal to f of x by taking the square root of the y coordinates on y is equal to f of x. So what that means is we want to take the square root of, you know, values like this to see where they are. Now it's it's going to be the probably the best choice will be to choose numbers like this, right? Because 16 is a perfect square. So that's a nice number. 9 is a perfect square. So we're going to choose those points and four. So we can figure out where these points are. Now it doesn't matter that we don't know the x value. We just, because it's going to go straight down. So when we sketch this, that'll be, that'll be close enough. So the square root of four is two. Square root of nine is three. And square root of 16 is four. And now we have a pretty good picture. Now, 
one thing to remember is that this the green part of the function is above the blue line right here right so there's that little section that's above next let's state the range of y is equal to the square root of f of x well that's pretty straightforward because you can't take the square root of the negative so it has to be above zero so y is greater than or equal to zero